uh, it's, it's a frightening prospect for the rest of the league, just how well that he's playing right now. Are the German fans surprised how good he is, Archie? I, I don't think so, because on the other hand, he costs 100 million, and yeah. that is money that no one else in the league can spend. The fact that the gap between Bayern and Dortmund, even just in terms of budget, like Bayern's wage budget is nearly twice as much as Dortmund's. So that, that tells you something that how much the, they're paying Harry Kane. And when there is that sort of gap in terms of what you're paying your, your top striker as well, it's, I think, to be expected that he was going to do well. I think he's just performing a little bit above the expectations. I wouldn't say that everybody in Germany is like, wow, isn't this great? In fact, I, I spoke to an Eintracht Frankfurt fan who was like, great, came to the Bundesliga. That means he's going to come to my club and score three goals. Fantastic. So, yeah, I, I don't think it's, it's openly welcomed by all Bundesliga fans because they know that it just decreases. <laughs> The, uh, the likelihood of their team taking any points off Bayern. But for Bayern, it, it's certainly something they needed, albeit it's a shiny plaster because they also desperately need another defender and a holding six, as has been the phrase in Germany, hmm. a.k.a. a defensive midfielder. Hey, Jan, they were right not to give old Lewandowski that Ballon d'Or. It's easy to score in Germany. Absolutely. It is the easiest thing to do, to go there and do what Kane is doing. The only problem is doing the same thing in the Champions League, isn't it? He? He's doing it everywhere. And I, I was thinking that uh, UK sent the Beatles to Hamburg in, in the beginning mm. of the 60s. Then you sent Kevin Keegan there in the end of the 70s. And now Harry Kane. You can't have a better, you can't have a better ambassador for, for your country, for your league. And this makes, yes, I'm with a heart to... I mean... Good that you mentioned a Frankfurt fan because we are afraid, of course, that he will score against us. But still, this is a very plus for the German Bundesliga because when you're losing all the players out of the league, they call you the Farmers League. They call this is the place where you go with your young players and they, they go into the Premier League. Harry Kane is doing fantastic. And, and Harry Kane also kind of help Tuchel with all the soap opera in and around it because you know when the goal is get tough he will be there it's no coincidence that the only goal a game that they lost this season was Saarbrücken in the Pokal in the cup and then he mm. was on the bench of course but then he came back in the Classica took another hat trick so yeah amazing how he's doing and did we know that he would score a lot of goals for Bayern of course we did but I, I'm still a bit surprised at how quick he has adjusted to the way they are playing and and as Archie was mentioning he's doing the players around him better there is no coincidence that the Leroy Sané or a Musial and all are more constant in their performances because they have someone to play with a very not only a brave but also a very intelligent striker like Harry Kane around them uh, Jan mentioned the soap opera Archie what what is it Thomas Tuchel's hated by his players and the board. That's quite impressive. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. So the soap opera is with Sky in Germany and the criticism that Tuchel has had to take about from Didi Harman and Lothar Matthäus about there being no development in the way that they play, which I think is actually a fair observation overall but Tuchel has been confronted with this consistently at his press conferences to the point that he's gone, I've had enough. Added to that, after the Zarbrücken game where they were knocked out of the cup by, let's not forget, the team that was 15th in the third division, that it was then, there was then these talks of Tuchel doesn't get on with his players and that all kind of moulded into one and Tuchel exploded both before and after the Dortmund game. So that's what is creating this noise. And, and the thing is, is at Bayern, you don't look at results in the same way that I would say you would with a normal club. Because if you were going purely on results and you looked at the ways that coaches have been either sacked or left the club in the last 12 years, I think you have to go back 12 years to the last time you would say you saw a normal departure because of results. And that was when Louis van Gaal was in charge. There have been six or seven different full-time coaches with your Pankis' time in charge. Difficult to really define that exact number. But Bayern Munich is a different beast. And it's why these things, these aesthetic things matter. And that 
let's not forget, Bayern went out on a limb by sacking Julian Nagelsmann when they did. And so far, the best performances have come against Borussia Dortmund, a team that seemed to have a mental deficit against Bayern Munich. It needs to happen more often that they are not conceding so many chances and that they are dominating teams in the way that they have done in the past. Bayern Munich's biggest enemy is themselves in the last 10 years and the fact that they've been so dominant and there have been better forms of this team during that period. Go on, but, yeah. But, but the, yeah, but the funny thing is that we, we can't... I mean, we have to explain the soap opera and I tried to do it short. Because Tuchel, when he had a go at Lothar Mateus after the game, he was, he was a bit worried. So he said to friends, oh, I think I went too far here. So what happened the next day is that all the management, all the leaders of Bayern said, well done, son, well done, that's what we do. Go attack, uh, the, the, the attacker like uh, Uli Hoeneß used to do. And, and then things change a bit around and then they start with the intrigues. So the last intrigue now is not only Lothar Matthäus, but to make the soap opera even more, worse now, is that the host of Sky, Sebastian Hellman, who is a great girl pundit, I worked with him for three years, one of the best around, but he got the same agent as Julian Nagelsmann. So Bayern says, well, I think that they want to Nagelsmann to be better than Tuchel, and this is to be continued. So at the moment, there is, they are with Thomas Tuchel. If you lose against Heidenheim, then they probably say he should never have done this after the Dortmund game. But the good thing about Tuchel is that he, he doesn't care. But still, he has realized how important to have the players on his side. So see this as a way to keep the players with him. And I have to say to the critics who says he should never have done this uh, after the 4-0 at Dortmund, but what, when should he have done it? When should a coach do that? And they can live with it. This is good for Lothar Matthäus. It's good for Didi Hamad. It's good for Sky. They're, they're, this is the part of the sportainment. This is the rock and roll and we like it.